I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered how you weigh the Earth? Around a thousand years ago, Persian scholar Al-Biruni managed to measure the radius of the Earth with incredible accuracy. Sat on the top of a mountain, he measured the angle between the astronomical horizon, which is perpendicular to straight down, and the true horizon, where the land stops. Knowing only the height of the mountain and a handful of angles, he was able to work out the radius of the Earth using trigonometry. And incredibly, a thousand years on, he was only 16 kilometers out of its current average of 6,356.7 kilometers. So now we knew roughly how much Earth we had, it only remained to find out its density so that we could weigh it. In 1686, Sir Isaac Newton came up with this rather brilliant equation. It basically means that the attractive gravitational force between two objects hanging in space is going to be proportional to how heavy they are and how large the distance is between them. It wasn't until quirky English scientist Henry Cavendish came along in 1798 that a critical component was added to complete this puzzle. Cavendish actively wanted to weigh the Earth, and to do this, he needed to work out its density. He came up with an experiment a little bit like this to measure the attractive forces between two objects, and as the balls move closer together, they shift the mirror which they are attached to, which then bounces light off in different directions, which he can then measure. Cavendish was fastidious in his studies, realising that even his own body mass walking around the room might affect the results, so instead he observed his experiment from afar, choosing to use telescopes and external control controls to move things around. Cavendish did this with a number of different weights and distances to add the finishing element to Newton's equation, the universal gravitational constant, g. Now he knew the force of gravity, the gravitational constant, the radius of the Earth and the mass of an object suspended above the surface, he could work out how much the Earth would weigh. However, although he describes his desire to weigh the Earth, weirdly, Cavendish only ever presented the Earth's density. And despite all of his careful preparations, he even managed to write down the wrong number of that. That's an epic typo. But using a combination of genius from all of these icons, we can roughly work out the mass of the Earth right now. Step one, drop a one kilogram weight from a known height. Count how long it takes to hit the ground to work out its gravitational acceleration. Cheers, Newton. Or just take it from us that it's 9.81 meters per second squared. Step two, pinch the gravitational constant from Cavendish. Thank you very much. Step three, take that number from Baruni and tweak it slightly to keep it up to modern standards. Step four, switch Newton's equation round now that you're trying to solve for the mass of Earth and you know the other bits. Step five, plug in the numbers and pat yourself on the back. You've just worked out that the Earth is roughly 5.9 septillion kilograms. What's that? You want a number slightly easier to comprehend? Okay, how about 54 quintillion blue whales or 853 quintillion African elephants? How about 81.2 moons? So weighing the Earth is actually pretty easy just by dropping things on it. And believe it or not, this is basically how we measure how heavy other planets are, by seeing how strongly they pull their moons or space probes towards them. For more amazing science from the universe, make sure to subscribe to Earth Unplugged and we'll see you soon. The surface area of the world is 197 million square miles and the current population is estimated at 7.1 billion people and it's expanding by over 200,000 people per day. But if you Well, it's thought that the average Brit uses around 150 litres or 33 gallons of water per day. However, if we include the amount of water used in processing our imported foods and textiles, known as virtual water, things take a drastic turn for the worse. 